Australian police said they had received reports that multiple people were stabbed at a busy shopping centre in Sydney. The incidents occurred at the sprawling Westfield Bondi Junction Mall complex, which was packed with Saturday afternoon shoppers, Waverley Council said on X. A critical incident has commenced following the shooting of mail at Bondi Junction. Just before emergency services were called to Westfield Bondi Junction following reports of multiple people stabbed. People are urged to avoid the area. One shopper reported hearing gunshots before the evacuation was ordered, adding people were running and shop shutters were going down. A man was shot at a mall in Sydney following reports of multiple people stabbed, police in the city said the Westfield Bondi Junction shopping centre is located in a known Jewish area of the Australian city. People are urged to avoid the area, the statement said. Inquiries are continuing in relation to the incident and there are no further details. Images apparently from the scene appear to show multiple casualties as well as a man carrying a large knife. New South Wales ambulance told news agency AFP one man, believed to be an attacker, was shot dead by police. Eyewitnesses said there was panic at the scene, with shoppers running to safety and police trying to secure the area. Many more are in a critical condition, a police source not authorized to speak publicly said. Multiple posts on social media show crowds fleeing as emergency. Services swarmed the center, there are reports of up to six people dead in a stabbing spree at Bondi Junction Shopping Center. Russian factories are rushing to purchase anti-drone equipment, there is no relying on the military. Increasing Ukrainian drone attacks are forcing Russian companies to look for ways to protect their own plants and factories instead of relying on the military. In the coming quarters, Russia will likely be able to make its oil refineries and other high-level facilities less vulnerable to drone strikes, said economist Alexander Isakov of Bloomberg Economics. Much of the action was taken during a period of relatively lax enforcement of trade sanctions, including on imports of electronic components, he said. According to one of the local electronic procurement platforms, TenderPro, about a third of all tenders for the supply of UAV protection systems were carried out by oil and gas companies. Industrial and mining companies account for 28% and 10% of cases, respectively. The war has led to explosive growth in the electronic warfare market and production has not yet kept pace with demand, said Andriy Klyoev. General Director of Local Radar Equipment Manufacturer Umias. The threat is growing much faster than manufacturers can cope with it, he emphasized, speaking at a conference on the counter UAV technologies in Moscow. Electronic warfare capabilities are not invulnerable to drone attacks, but can significantly limit the damage. These defenses prevented a strike at the Slavneft plant in Yaroslavl, Russia's sixth largest oil refinery, which purchased its defense systems from a subsidiary of state corporation Rostec. According to Bloomberg estimates, based on data from government procurement portals, last year, state-owned companies and government agencies spent at least 1.7 billion rubles or $18.4 million on electronic security. Much of that spending was aimed at protecting utility and energy infrastructure, including a nuclear power plant 200 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. In addition to expensive electronics, companies are also forced to invest in building physical barriers, strengthening existing structures and ensuring themselves against damage. According to Elena Estafieva, commercial director of the Moscow platform TenderPro, interest in insurance against damage by drones has tripled. Russia used its new KH-69 cruise missiles to destroy the Trypilska thermal power plant near Ukrainian capital Kiev on Thursday. According to Defense Express website, fragments of this missile have been found near the site of the destruction. KH-69 is a subsonic cruise missile for tactical aircraft, which can be used with Su-34 and Su-35 fighters. The missiles were fired at the range of about 400 kilometers. Despite the fact that KH-69 missile is subsonic and has a smaller warhead than the hypersonic KH-47M2 Kinzel, the use of the KH-69 to strike Trypilska raises an alarm. Defense Express noted that the destruction of Trypilska power plant indicates that KH-69 cruise missiles can penetrate the obviously exhausted Ukrainian air defense. At the same time, the range of the use of this missile of 400 kilometers is sufficient to hit a significant number of objects on Ukraine's territory from tactical aircraft, which may well approach the border or the front line at a range of 50 to 70 kilometers.
KH-69 was first used in in February 2024, although there were isolated cases of their being used in early 2023. The attack on Tripilska on Thursday did not cause any casualties. The attack has not resulted in power cuts in Kiev or other regions supplied by Tripilska, either. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky described the attack as terror, reiterating his earlier calls for more arms supplies to his country. We need air defense and other defense support, not eye-closing and long discussions, Zelensky said and accused the West of turning a blind eye to his country's need for more air defenses. Footage shared on social media showed fire raging from the building in black smoke. The Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement that the strike was in response to Ukraine's earlier attacks on Russia's oil and gas infrastructure. Ukraine's Air Force said it struck 18 incoming Russian missiles and 39 drones. According to the Air Force, Russia also fired six hypersonic Kinzhal missiles, none of which they were able to down. According to Centrenergo Energy Company, Tripilska thermal power plant was completely destroyed during the attack. A black day in the history of Centrenergo. The scale of the destruction is terrible. Money can't estimate it. This is the biggest challenge for us in the history of the company, the company said in a statement.